Hello, everybody. Uh, I just wanted to read something that's on my heart and mind today. I'm going to be in the first and second chapter of Revelations. I'm going to start um, in Revelation 1. And John was on the Isle of Patmos. And on the Lord's Day, he had vision and he wrote this. And he's talking about when he saw the man that, let me back up just a few verses. And in the midst of the, and I turned to see the voice that spoke with me and being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like the son of man clothed with a white garment down to the foot and girded about the paps with a golden girdle. And his head and his hair was white like wool as white as snow and his eyes were a flame of fire. And his feet was like on the fine grass as if it had been, they burned in a furnace. And his voice is the sound of many waters. He had in his right hand seven stars. And out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword. And his countenance was as the sun shineth in his strength. And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. And he said, and he laid his right hand upon me, and he said unto me, Fear not, I am the first and the last. I am he that liveth and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And have the gates of hell and of death, and have the keys of the hell and of death. Write the things which thou hast seen, and the things which are, and the things which shall be hereafter. So I might have started, should have started right here, but in the 20th verse, he said, The mystery of the seven stars which thou sawest in the right hand, and the seven golden candlesticks. The seven stars are the angels of the seven church churches and the seven candlesticks, which thou sawest are the seven churches. And then he goes on to say, uh, this is chapter two. This is the, unto the angel of the church of Ephesus. Um, These things write he that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand, who walketh in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. I know thy works, and thy labor, and thy patience, and how thou cannot bear them that which are evil, and how thou hast tried them which say they are apostles, and are not, and have found them liars, and hath borne, and hath patience, and for my name's sake have labored, and have not fainted. That sounds like some really good people. I mean some real good people, strict people. But he said, nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee, because thy Thou hast left thy first love. With all the good things they did, it looked like he wouldn't have had much against them, but he said he had somewhat against them because they had left their first love. Remember, therefore, from which thou art fallen, and repent, and do the first works, or else I will come unto thee quickly and remove thy candlestick out of his place, except thou repent. Do you remember what the candlestick was that we read in the first chapter? He said... And the seven candlesticks which thou sawest are the seven churches. If we let love go out of our church, then um, uh, he said he would remove the candlestick out of its place. We don't want to do that. We don't want to be uh, where love goes out of our churches. Uh, I believe if that happens, the, the, the doors will just rot down. Won't be anybody coming. And uh, so we must keep love in the church. And uh, as I said, I am impressed with all that the the good th- things those people are doing. You know, it's good to be strict. Um, if you go going down the continuum of, of strictness, you can just, be, just increase strictness as much as you want to. Unless it comes to the time that when, as you increase it, the love backs back up. You know, in the 10th chapter of Luke, when he was talking about the Good Samaritan, he said, uh, Behold, a certain lawyer stood up and tempted him, saying, Master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? He said unto him, Thou, what is written in the law, how readest thou? And he says, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all their soul and with all thy strength and with all thy mind and thy neighbor as thyself. And he answered him right, said, Thou hast answered, he said unto him, Thou hast answered right, this do 
and thou shalt live. Uh, I think I made a, a audio recording of the Good Samaritan for the radio program, and so I'm not going to do that all over again. But he told that lawyer that it was to love the Lord thy God with all their heart and thy soul and with all their strength and mind and thy neighbor as thyself. So he had an opportunity there right then to this lawyer to establish what was the most important. And uh, with all, how much is all? When you, when you do, when you have done all, there's nothing left to do. If you had a washcloth and it's full of water and you started wringing water out of it, as long as you could get a drop out, then you haven't squeezed all of it out. So it's every bit of it. And he talks about here that he, those people had done all those things and still he had somewhat against them because they had left their first love. You remember your first love. When, when God came into my life, when he gave me the gift of the Holy Ghost, then that I had love for everybody. It's the kind of love that will pray for your enemies uh, and those that despitefully use you and, and love those people. Uh, it's it's a it's a a love that a man can't do on his own. Uh, he said in his word, "God is love." I know that in school they taught me that two plus two is four. God is love. Two plus two is four. Two plus two equals four. God equals love. God is love. If I want to be more like God, then I need to be more have more love because that's what God is. Um, if I want to be more like God, I need to be more forgiving. So there's a way we can get closer to him. Um, we just need to keep that first love, that, that burning in our heart that the man that they, they had on, on the walk to Emmaus when they said, didn't our hearts burn within us? We need that kind of love that uh, is, is just greater than on the surface. It needs to run deep. And uh, we need to love everyone. It, it, the rule for loving is you just love everybody. It's easy to love people that love you back. It's easy to forgive people that forgive you. But to love everyone, forgive everyone, 100%, that's what we need. So with this, I'm going to close. If you need me, let me know.